Charlie, thank you so much. Carol Master along with Matt Miller live here on Bloomberg Business Week. And I don't know if you saw this, Matt, interesting story. It was about Coinbase Global, uh, which is the largest U.S. digital asset exchange, saying the intersection of AI, artificial intelligence, and crypto represents an important opportunity for entrepreneurs, including helping to prevent some of the excesses cited by critics of the technology. That, to me, is... Interesting. Yeah, no, Weird. I think it's it's absolutely fascinating. Um, the intersection between blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology and artificial intelligence is something that we focus on on uh, Bloomberg Crypto, which is every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Bloomberg Television. Shameless promo. Yeah. But, that, but all right, so let's get into it with our guest. Jack O'Halloran is co-founder and CEO of Scale Labs. Uh, he joins us on Zoom from San Francisco. Jack also co-founder of Actana, I hope I'm saying it correctly, uh, co-founder of Incent Align and has held some uh, executive positions at companies like Good Technology and Motorola. Jack, nice to have you here. Um, talk to us about blockchain and AI. What's the potential? Yeah, pleasure to be here today. So, um, hey, I think we're at the very early stages of what, what what will be perhaps the most transformational technology movement of the last 20 years. Um, we're already seeing impact today, and I think, you know, we're still in the early days. Well, what do you mean specifically? That's big and broad. <laughs> do, do yeah, yeah. Down. So, so diving, yeah, so diving in a little deeper, um, I think the headlines are always about this amazing intersection where we have artificially intelligent bots that are making purchase decisions for us, that are managing our wallets that are, you know, this fully connected AI and blockchain ecosystem. But today, what's happening is the first immediate impact is that d applications are actually being developed, Web3 applications in particular, at an alarmingly fast rate with the help of AI. So it's actually AI is playing a role in blockchain development at the application level, at the infrastructure level, at the QA level. So blockchain devs are using AI to build applications faster. So we're prob my, my sense of what I'm seeing is We'll have at least a 10x growth in applications built in the Web3 space thanks to the support and help of AI. So that, that's the first piece and happy to kind of go into the other pieces as well. Well, I just wonder, um, you know, who's using these applications? Um, because I was looking, for example, uh, recently at the Solana phone mm -hmm. and it's got all of these um you know, decentralized apps on it, but I just don't know what I would do with all this stuff. It's like we have this technology um, looking for a problem to solve. I get what and you can use, do yeah. with, with cryptocurrency, and I love the idea of uh, trustless decentralized currency, but I just don't understand, um, you know, who's using the applications, the other applications that we put on the blockchain yet yeah and you know what you're calling out the that is the elephant in the room that is the problem that uh, we at scale are working on solving every single day and the right and, and for example i worked in Mo in mobile back in 2005 2006 2007 2008 and i have to tell you the amount of applications utilized was just you know it was sparse no one you the the device speeds were horrible the ux was horrible the battery life the compute power all of a sudden in 2010 you had millions of people simultaneously playing each other in games across the world on mobile and we're at one of those moments, I believe, in Web3, where right now there's there's some phenomenal use cases out there, but the UX is horrible. The, the, the transaction costs are high. The access points and accessibility, you have to be an engineer to use a lot of these applications. And, and so within the Ethereum ecosystem in particular, there's just been some, I think, some amazing pushes on the UX level that are going to make these apps easier to use. Because to your point, we are not seeing the actual throughput in users and, and it's in large part the similar gating issue we had in mobile. By the way, talk to us for a, for a moment about scale, because um, what you guys are doing is addressing a real problem in the Ethereum ecosystem, which is gas fees that are out of control, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think it, it kind of like it goes back to your point earlier, where if you build applications with really cool use cases, but they're incredibly cumbersome to use, they're incredibly expensive to use, who's going to use them? Well. The answer is the same people that use app, Web3 apps today, and it's probably like 10,000 developers. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. Scale is set out to build a, it's almost a Web2 like business model where application developers are able to pay in advance for the gas fees and then take the burden off the end user for the fees. It also creates better unit economics and also creates for you know faster processing, faster blockchain execution. So our goal at the end of the day is to open up Web3 
to normal users and help application developers actually fulfill these big promises and hype that we've been reading about. So is it all developers that are using, that are on scale at this point? Who Who is using it or who's on it? Yeah, so the largest use case, which is probably not a surprise to people in terms of actual end users are games. So games are a phenomenal early use case for any technology. I mentioned earlier mobile and you know, the first, you know, you know, and I, I worked at Good Technology and we had 92 of the top 100, Fortune 100 companies as customers. And you know what? The only application anyone even used was email. <laughs> and I've, everyone remembers those days. But we're going through a similar thing here in blockchain where um, games are the leading frontier because it makes a lot of sense and they can operate on the back end. Um, it, it fits the profile and the, the social so, social demographics of the users. And the next phase, from my belief, my my view is our uh, Web three social applications that are disrupting this whole creator economy space and content space, and and we're just seeing a lot of growth there as well. But the developers utilize scale uh, to your question uh, to create applications and to run applications faster. But at the end of the day, we all want to service the end user. It's funny. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, Jack, if you're familiar with the Bloomberg terminal, but you oh, yeah. can oh, do. Yeah so much it's mind-boggling what you can do with this terminal and the most used function of course is message like <laughs> email <laughs> is yeah. um the killer app here uh <laughs> I, let's talk let's get back to ai for a minute because i think it's really interesting that we see open ai doing well and you're, there's clearly going to be a battle between the biggest players to see um whose model can learn the most and but you are looking forward to a, a decentralized AI model, and I wonder if that somehow takes the danger out of it. You know, Alex Karp from Palantir the other day said, man, the products we make are so powerful, I don't even know if we should be selling them, which I thought was pretty interesting. Is a decentralized AI going to solve a lot of those issues? You know, it is, but my my personal feeling is that we're going to see the actual uh, trustless decentralization come later. And the first piece will be, you know, seeing uh, Web3 applications where you actually have the power and benefits of AI in terms of automation and help and writing and recommendations and conversation connecting with, you know, NFT gating and in programmable currencies and smart contracts. And then, you know, eventually we're going to get to this point where people are saying, hey, well, why are we again trusting the world's three largest companies to essentially make 90% of the decisions that are made on the internet. And that's when you're going to start seeing those models start living in a more open source, transparent, trustless manner and seeing that that, that kind of like ultimate nirvana of blockchain and, uh, and AI synergy. But it, it's still a ways off. And frankly, so, you know, I'm thinking of people, me, who are listening and just, you know, normal people, regular people who maybe aren't as uh, enmeshed in, in this world or the, you know, blockchain world. So how does it you know, practically impact us potentially, the stuff that you're talking about, the integration of AI and uh, blockchain. Yeah, so uh, let's look at, a, I think, a good use case. Let's look at music, for example. So let's say there's a decentralized music platform. And right now, artists that put music on iTunes or Spotify get a very low fraction of return. And there's lots of, you know, middlemen hands in the way. There are these decentralized music platforms that are popping up where actually artists directly submit music, people pay in still small increments, but instead of 10% of their payment going to artists, 90 some percent is going and the other piece is going to the community. Well, that's a cool Web3 application, but the way I, AI would intersect is all of a sudden you're getting conversational uh, input in terms of uh, you know what you should listen to, how you should listen to it. Artists are creating music faster, better, more specific, more tailored to certain audiences. And, and AI is, is really a creation tool and so you're going to see, you know, both artists and and it's a creation and curation tool. So you're going to start seeing the kind of, I guess, symphony of these uh, end results come together mm. where people are going to start, you know, we're going to start creating more things faster and more and for more specific audiences and with programmable money without less middlemen. That's that's one example of where, you know, and hopefully that's you don't cool. need an engineering degree to use that application, which that's is where, where, cool. where we need to get to. I so today I was coming to work and I was uh, asked Apple Music to play me a radio station that was centered around Black Sabbath. So I wanted to hear stuff that wasn't Black Sabbath because I've heard all of it a million times, but like Black Sabbath. And then I realized that Apple Music is just selling me with this um, radio station what it wants me to hear that's like black sabbath so i've had something decentralized i could hear true black sabbath-esque metal 
Yeah. And, and you look at all the drama and, you know, our Twitter feeds and our social yeah. feeds around who's in control of those algorithms. Well, eventually those are going to be all large language model right. algorithms that are super smart and intelligent. But, you know, who's in okay. control? Who's managing my political right. you know, view? You know, guess gotta, what you will be able to. And yeah, we so. got to run. Jack, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Jack O'Halloran, co-founder, CEO of Scale Labs. All right.